Welcome to worship here at Mount Carmel Baptist Church. We welcome you today to worship with us. We are looking forward to a great service and we're gonna have a good time in the name of the Lord. Oh, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Would you go with me in prayer as we pause to invite God into our spaces of worship? God, at this time, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we thank you for the food that was on the table this morning. We thank you for the warmth that's in our household, God. We thank you for the love that flows from family member to family member, God. We thank you for the reason for this season that we celebrate you, God, to remind us the reason you came to save us and to rescue us. So God, right now we invite you into our places of worship, whether it be our homes, God, our jobs, in our cars, at the park, wherever we choose to worship you, God, we ask that you would sanctify that place, God, and you would make it holy for this time. And God, we ask that you would remind us of the things that you've done for us to bring us here to this place. Even in the midst of what's going on in the world, you have provided a place for us to worship you. And we are thankful and grateful, God, so in this time, we celebrate you. We come yearning to learn more about you. God, we come to experience you in truth and in life. So God, we ask that you would show up. We pray thy blessings upon those who are sick or who are in ailment. God, we pray that you would touch them. We pray for those who feel lonely at this time, God. We ask that you would visit them, God. God, we ask that this church will continue to do the things that you have called us to do, even in this pandemic. And God, we will forever give you praise, honor, and glory. We worship you at this time. And the church said, amen. Amen. God is good, isn't he? If you would, we're going to read our scripture for today. That scripture comes from the book of Psalms, and it's the 98th chapter, Psalms, the 98th chapter. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And the word of God reads as thus. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory he has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and with the sound of melody with the trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the king, he before the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy and the presence of the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now, Mount Carmel, will you please take a moment to meet and greet each other online? Take this opportunity to subscribe to our channel. Make sure that we are tuning in weekly and getting all the information we we need during this time, for we are still busy as a church and we are still doing the Lord's work. At this time, I invite you to give. You can give several ways here at Mount Carmel. You can give through Givelify. You can give on the church website. You can choose to mail in your gift of giving 
Or if you choose, you can bring it here in person, Monday through Friday from 10 to two o'clock, or on Wednesdays, you could bring it that evening from three till six. Whichever way you choose to give, know that we are still busy in the kingdom and doing that work of the Lord. And now with that offering, would you please go with me in prayer? God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for those who give because they know it's the right thing to do. God, we thank you for those who give because they give expecting a blessing. God, we pray for those who are giving because they are giving in abundance, God, for all that you have given us. Whichever way they choose to give and whichever position they stand in, God, we pray that these gifts would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom to feed, to house, and to help those who are in need. So God, bless these gifts, bless the church as we use these gifts in the community. For there is a great need right now. We ask that you would grant us the wisdom and the guidance to do so, so that it would be pleasing in your sight. And the church said, amen, amen. And now, continue to greet each other if you would, but while you do that, the ministry of music is going to take us to higher heights in praise. So stand up in your rooms or wherever you are, and let's lift up the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening, remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. We like to sing this song, Emmanuel, that means God is with us. Come on, say it. Come. Come. Come on, sing it with us. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Down before, him. down before him, worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, say it again. Come, 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 let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before Kneel him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come on, let's sing this part. Come on, say it. Emmanuel, come on. Emmanuel. Come on, say it. Emmanuel, say it. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God is with us. Emmanuel. Oh, let's say it again. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. And we worship you, God. We worship you. Now come on, let's sing it one more time. Come on, say it. Come, let us adore. Come. Come, let us adore him. Let's kneel, kneel down, down before, before him. him. He's worthy. Worship. Worship and adore him. Come, let us adore him.
Come on, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Come on, say it again. We worship you. We worship you. Lord, we adore your name. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. Yes, we do. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. Come on, one last time. We worship you. We worship you. Ooh. Hallelujah, we worship you. God. Good morning, beloved, and welcome Hallelujah. to worship here at Mount Carmel Church. Such a blessing to welcome you today. I'm Pastor Kimbrough, and we are in the Advent season, and we are celebrating Christ, uh, Christ's arrival into the world. In John's Gospel, in verse number one, we're told that in the beginning, the Word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of God. Mankind, The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. But he himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light, that gives light to everyone, comes into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And so today the Advent candles have been lit, have been lit, candle of hope and the candle of joy, the candle of love. And we light the final candle today, the candle of peace, the candle of peace on this final Advent Sunday. Join us for Christmas Eve worship at 6 p.m. and we will light the Christ candle, which is the candle in the center, and we will light that candle celebrating Emmanuel, God with us. That's Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. Let me invite you to gather your family, your children and grandchildren, join together. It's a wonderful time on Christmas Eve and share that service with us. We'll be prompt at 6 o'clock, and you can plan for no more than about 35 minutes or so, and we'll have a wonderful celebration together. We'll be sharing in the Christmas story, and uh, it'll be wonderful for the children to be able to hear it right from the Holy Scripture. So as we turn now to our focus today, from Psalms 103, I'm sorry, Psalms 105, verse number 43. 105, 43. Psalm 105, 43. 105th Psalm, verse number 43. And there you find these words recorded. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones 
with singing. And recall in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 49, Luke chapter 1, 46 through 49, and Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servants. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Let's pray, God, we thank you for this moment, and we thank you for the gift of God as we share the word of God today as a way of hope and celebration in this wonderful Advent season. Today I want to focus our attention on the subject matter, joy in the wilderness, Joy in the wilderness. Somebody type it in for me. Joy in the wilderness. Those of us who are familiar with the psalm, and the psalmist who writes the psalm, Psalm 105, Psalm 105, is a wonderful word. It starts out in a note of praise, verses 1 through 6, and then moves recounting from the Pentateuch all the way to the covenant of Abraham. The psalm recalls the story of Israel, and the psalmist lifts up how Israel came uh, to Egypt, and then how they grew under the oppression of Pharaoh and under the bondage of slavery they grew. And you can read that in verses 16 through 25. And then God's miraculous intervention in the Exodus, the psalmist affirms that God the Lord God, Yahweh, protected Israel as he led them in the wilderness and through the wilderness and ultimately coming and entering the promised land. And it says as they entered the promised land, the psalm concludes that God brought Israel out of Egypt and into Cana so that they would obey God and obey God's commandment and be in relationship with God and live in such a way that they would give God glory in their lives and their community would reflect God's glory and God's beauty. And the text says in verse number 43, so he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. Somebody type that in. Somebody go ahead and type in, I'm coming out with joy. I'm coming out with joy. He brought his people out with joy. I'm coming out with joy. And that's what Advent is all about. That's what the season of expectation is all about. It's a season where we as the people of faith, the people of hope, the people of joy and peace and love, the people of Christ Jesus, that our expectation is that even in the midst of this year, 2020, even while we're going through such challenges that we haven't seen before, that we are going to come through it and come out of it in joy. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. Now, like myself, uh, I know you can say this is a year that you've never seen before and you've never experienced much of what we are experiencing. None of us have ever experienced the kind of pandemic, the world pandemic that COVID has become, COVID-19. Nobody could have thought this up. It wouldn't have even made a good movie. Nobody would have believed it. How many of us could have imagined that schools would be shut down and uh, employees would be working remotely from home and people would be asked to remain in their homes in a way to stop the spread of this uh, transmitted disease here? We, we could never have imagined this. Who could have uh, uh, anticipated 
up to 300,000 people have died since the spring of this year in this country alone. Healthcare workers being overwhelmed, people's spirits being pulled down, people finding and hoping to find something to hold on to in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the challenge. That's what COVID has done. COVID has become a normality for us. It's not strange anymore when somebody walks into a store or a bank or, or a place of work or a church or wherever, and they got a mask on their face. As a matter of fact, you see signs. If you don't have a mask, we're not going to serve you. Now imagine how different that is. Imagine the kind of burden that is on people all across the land and to hear the hope in Psalms for Psalms 10 Psalms here to hear in hope Psalms 105 43 so he brought his people out with joy his chosen ones with singing to Think about all the stuff that we have lived through this year. And thank God we're in the land of the living. Somebody type that in. Thank God we're in the land of the living. As long as you're living, there's hope. As long as you're living, there's possibility. As long as you're living, that means God is not through with you yet. And so you ought to thank God and praise God for life today because that means the story is not over. No, the story has not, is not over. The half has not been told what God is doing and what God's going to do in your life. We lost Kobe Bryant and Gigi in the first part of the years. We've seen wildfires. We've seen a prince and a princess step down. We've seen the winds of change upon the land. We've learned how and seen technology used in ways that we never thought possible. Many of us are being forced to come to grips with a whole new way of living. You used to like to go down to the mall and hang out, and now Amazon has taken over. You, you got boxes coming to the house on the front porch, one after the other. Your whole life has been shifted and turned upside down. It all hadn't been bad. We've got winds of change. We've got changing national leaders. Leadership. We got shifting in places of power and we've got uh, the church shifting. We've got the government shifting. Uh, we've got industry shifting all around us. We see God is moving. Now, we're not quite sure where the chips are going to land, but we are certain that in the midst of this, that God is is delivering. God is bringing us out. So he brought his people out with joy. And that's what I came to say to somebody today. You may be in the wilderness. Your life may be in the wilderness. It may be a dark season for you, even though it's Christmas. And many times during the holiday season, many people find themselves in a state of depression or overcast spirit because they feel like they're in the wilderness. Somebody's been to the graveyard. Somebody's had to bury a loved one. Somebody has gone through a broken relationship. Somebody has had conflict in their home. And Christmas just does not seem like Christmas. Christmas does not seem like it's a season of joy. You may be feeling a heaviness and you may be saying, now what in the world do I have to be joyful? Joyous about. I want to know more about this Jesus preacher that you keep saying loves me. But what I'm experiencing this year is a whole, of, whole bunch of stuff that I don't even understand how to handle and how to control. And so what I want to say to you is that when a psalmist wrote this, he wrote this not in the condition that they were already in the promised land. He wrote this in the midst of the wilderness. He is saying in the midst of the wilderness that they began to experience the joy of the Lord even while they were in the wilderness. And that's a good word for somebody. That's a good word for somebody. Joy in the wilderness. Type that in, joy in the wilderness. You're here, joy in the wilderness. Whatever experience you're having, 
whatever you're facing, whatever challenge you may have, you can still experience joy in the wilderness. In the midst of rain and wind, you can experience God's joy in the wilderness. Pastor, what's your evidence? My evidence is that one starry night, God looked into the midst of the wilderness of this world, into the darkness of this world. And what did God do? God breathed, and he breathed on a young maiden. And when he breathed on Mary, in her womb was Jesus. And in the midst of the wilderness, God sent a seed of joy, a seed of expression of hope and peace and love. And so even though the world was in a dark place, the prophets had been silent for over several hundred years. John came and said, yes, there, I'm John the Baptist, but I'm not the one. There's one coming that's greater than me. And in due season and due time, John met Jesus at the River Jordan and baptized him. And the Bible says the Spirit of God descended upon him like a dove. And they heard a voice, and he heard a voice that said, Behold, my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. And so in the midst of the wilderness, God plants a seed of joy, of joy. And that's what I want to do today in your life. In the midst of the wilderness, I want to raise up a seed of joy in your life. I want you to know that the joy of Jesus, that the joy of Jesus, somebody type that in, the joy of Jesus can be yours today. His beauty, his love, his joy can live within your heart, within your soul, within your mind, because he is he is the light of the world. He is the light of the world. The joy, the joy, the joy of Jesus. He is the light of the world. Wilderness, in the wilderness, they began to sing. And they began to sing with joy. And the writer says, he brought them out in joy. Now let me help you get this. In the wilderness, you can go through it with your head cast down and your spirit cast down. And you can go through it begroaning and moaning and you can go through it, but there's something in the human spirit that when there is the seed of hope, a possibility, then all of a sudden you learn that even in the midst of the harshest of conditions, we can find, we can find a seed of joy. Now, I want you to think for a moment, where do you find joy at today? Where do you find joy at today? Some people find joy in the wind and the rain. Others find joy in creation, in the mountains and in the beaches. Some people find joy in their children or at a wedding or a great celebration. Uh, somebody will appreciate this. The psalm writer said in 104, Psalms 104 and 15, he says, a good bottle of wine is God's gift to bring joy to people's heart. I know somebody can type amen there because what he's saying is that God brings joy. And when you look in the Bible, when you see wine, it's a symbol of joy. When Jesus went to the wedding feast at Cana and the Bible says the, the wine ran out and Jesus turned the water into wine, he restores the joy of the occasion. Now, beloved, if you need to go have a glass of wine to find your joy, go on. you got my permission. Oh, somebody's been waiting for that one. Go on and get you a glass of wine. Okay, but be careful that you don't do an overboard. 
Amen, pastor. Amen, pastor. Because there's nothing wrong with a good glass of wine. Have a glass of wine and experience it as one of the joys of life. Attend a wedding and celebrate with people who you love and care about and enjoy it. Celebrate with your children. Gather them around. Enjoy the time you have. Find joy in that. You know, joy is an attitude. Joy is a disposition. Joy is the attitude that God's people adopt, not because of their circumstances, but because of the hope of Christ Jesus, the love and the promise of God. This is what provides joy. Israel, in the midst of suffering, in slavery, he brought them out in joy. What does God do? He raises up Moses to lead them to freedom. And one of the first things that Israel does is they begin to sing for their liberation. They begin to celebrate what God is doing. For that song or psalms is a sign of God's liberation, of God's joy. And Jesus' entrance into the world is a sign, a symbol. It is a doorway out of the wilderness. It is a doorway into the promise. It's a doorway out of the desert. It's a doorway into the promised land. And so I say to you, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. Don't wait. Don't wait until your promise shows up. Start rejoicing in advance because you know that God is a victorious God. Rejoice. Somebody type that in. Rejoice. Somebody say amen. Rejoice because God has already provided the victory. My spirit will not be cast down. I will not have a bowed down head. I will lift up my head. I will pull back my shoulders. I will rejoice even in the midst of the wilderness. He brought them out in joy. Beloved, don't wait until the promise shows up. Start thanking God for the promise that's on the way. Rejoice even when you're waiting for the promise. Let God hear your voice. Let God hear your spirit. Let God hear the sounds of praise and rejoicing. 43, verse 43, so he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. Sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing a song of victory. Sing a song of praise. Even if you can't sing, lift your voice. Let it be an instrument unto God and give God glory and give God praise. And do you realize that this is a defining moment for Israel? That this joy in the wilderness is a defining moment? It's a way of saying the joy of God's people is not determined by their struggle. It's determined by their future and by their destiny. And that's what excites me right now. That's what makes my soul happy. That's what gets me excited in Christ Jesus. It's not simply about where I'm at today or what's going on today, but I see a brighter day. I see a brighter future. I see a greater possibility. I see a great liberation from God. And that's what brings me joy. Not just what God has done and not even just what God is doing, but what brings me joy is when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for me. And when I look at the horizon, I believe that my days in front of me are better than my days behind me. And that's what I want to say to you today. I believe in your life that the days in front of you are better than the days behind you. And so you need to start right now 
living with a sense of expectation and joy and celebrating not only what God has done and what God is doing, but get happy. That's right. Get happy. Somebody type it in. Get happy in Jesus. Get happy about what's on the horizon. I'm looking forward to 2021. I'm looking forward to a watch night sermon. I'm looking forward to a new year because there's some things on the horizon. And when I come out of this year and when I go into next year, guess what? I'm coming out, not with my head bowed down, not with a cast down spirit, not limping, not sick. I'm coming out strong. I'm coming out healthy. I'm coming out above. I'm coming out in the front. I'm coming out with Jesus on my side. That's your word for the day. You are coming out with joy. You're coming out with promise. You're coming out with a blessing. You're coming out with a double portion. You're coming out with God's favor. You're coming out singing a song. You're coming out giving God praise. You're coming out with shouts of joy. Yeah, yeah, somebody type it in. I'm coming out with shouts of joy. I'm giving God praise. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out to a new life land, to a new promise, to a new living, a new walk, and a new talk. I'm getting better and better every single day of my life. There's more in front of me than what is behind me. Amen, pastor. Amen, pastor. Amen, pastor. They're coming out. He brought them out. He brought them out. He brought them out with joy. And I call that exceptional joy. I call that exceptional joy. It's the joy that anticipates that your future is greater than your past. Did you get that? Somebody type it in. Your future is greater than your past. And the evidence is that when Jesus, born in this world, he brought with him the good news. He brought with him the gospel. That's the good news. We're told that he was rejected by his own, but he brought in something that created exceptional joy. As a matter of fact, folks start singing joy to the world, peace on earth, and goodwill toward all men. That's the gift that God brings. He brings the gift of the Holy Spirit. He brings the gift of turning your sorrow into rejoicing. He turns your loss into a finding, a recuperating. He turns sadness into joy and sickness into health. He comes bringing with him his own testimony. And his testimony is this. I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We celebrate, not death, but we celebrate life. And so we are coming out with joy. Somebody type that in, joy. Joy, joy, I'm coming out in joy. I'm coming out singing. I'm coming out praising. I'm coming out lifting him up. The Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. That's joy. That's joy. That's joy. Let let me stop right there. I don't want to get too happy. Let me stop right there. That's joy. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody type in amen. Somebody give me a praise. Somebody give God a praise. Say, Pastor, I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm coming out in joy. I'm not going to be sitting around and moping and complaining about how bad things are because we've seen worse 
We've been through worse. And yet I see the joy of God coming and bringing us out. Today, beloved, today, beloved, in this Advent season, as we prepare for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, we pause and we give God glory and we give God praise. Because even on the other side of everything that we are experiencing, God has greater, greater, greater. Wow. God gave me that word way back before January started. Greater. And I have to confess, I have seen greater. I've experienced greater. We've seen greater. We've experienced greater. Because God is moving in such a very, very special way. If you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Beloved, I want to give you a great invitation, an invitation to simply raise your hand, say yes to the Lord. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my personal Savior, and I thank you. I thank you for my salvation today, and I accept it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, we would love to connect with you. We would love to connect with you. You'll see a link you can reach us by. We'd love to connect with you. You can reach us by way of phone number, by way of the email. You're, you're such a wonderful, wonderful person. And I want you to know that God loves you. God loves you. And that we love you in Christ today. Believing and trusting God for only God's best, greater in your life. You've been through some sorrow, you've been through some pain, but you're greater than that sorrow. You're greater through, than that pain. The Spirit of God is in you. It's greater than any sorrow, any pain. And I believe there's joy, not only through it, but on the other side of it. And God wants to bring you to that place. So as we close out today, I want to thank you for worshiping with us. It's been a beautiful worship experience. We praise God for you today. We praise God for the Word of God. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you a special word on Christmas Eve, something special for the families. It's not going to be very complicated. It's not going to be very long. We're going to come together and share communion and a candlelight service. We invite you to make sure you have your communion uh, uh, things that, that you need and also bring your family together. You'll be able to be together 35 minutes or so. And we're just going to share in the Christmas story and the blessing and prayer of our Christ. That's Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. right here. We look forward to connecting. And remember, we will celebrate New Year's Eve together at 12 noon at 7 p.m. and also at midnight. 12 noon, 7 p.m. and at midnight. And we're going to make it available to all who want to come and get a word of inspiration and hope going into the next year. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this season, and we thank you for the beauty of Christ in our life. We bless every person who share with us today and others who will watch later and join in and be connected. We bless every home and every family in this season of Advent, and we celebrate with great joy the expectation of Christ who came in the midst of the wilderness. And when he came in our wilderness, he brought us out with joy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, beloved. You have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. Pastor Kimbrough from Charlotte, North Carolina. Remember your three doubles, W's, wash your hands, wear your mask, keep your six feet distance. Most of all, share the love, and remember at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow.